Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. We are the first in the entire country to get to drive this, the Candy K27. I can't wait to tell you all about it. This is the Candy K27. It is one of two candy models that are launching in 2021 here in the United States. And this one is the least expensive one. It's actually the least expensive new car that you can purchase in the United States, factoring in the federal tax credit of $7,500. When you factor that in, this car is $9,999. That's right, it is under 10 grand for a brand new car. In certain states, like where I live in Colorado, this car is actually under $6,000 and the fact that it even has wheels for something that cheap is pretty impressive. Now, this is a little bit of an odd car to review because typically when we go and review new EVs, we you know, evaluate their performance as a vehicle, as an electric vehicle. We nitpick at the little things, the, the blending point from regen to acceleration in the pedal, a lot of features. But this review is a little different because we need to see, is this even a car? I mean, this is half the price of an easy go lithium powered golf cart when factoring the tax credits. Is this able to be used as a car? And I think if the answer is yes to that, then this is a win. But I think we'll find it might be even better. So let me take you around on a little tour to start of the Candy K27. Now I've been driving this car around all day here in Dallas, Texas, and I have been having an absolute blast. And so we'll start with the highlights. There are a few things that I do want to nitpick about the car, of course, but again, how nitpicky can we get with a car that's under $10,000? Again, factoring in the tax credit. Now, you may say many people who are going for a car like this can't get the tax credit. That's possible. But I think we'll also see many owners of Tesla and Lucid in the future and Tycons have these as fun around town cars. I don't think this is going to be bottom of the market only. I think we'll be seeing these in nice neighborhoods, in uh, college kids hands. I think this is a car for almost everyone. Anyway, let me take you around the candy. So we have what is a shell that's shared by a few different cars in other markets. I'm not sure exactly what, but it's maybe a Daihatsu. It's one of those generic Chinese car shells. But what's underneath and what's inside is all candy technology. So starting at the front, you'll see we have these really cool circular headlights. I think the car is a pleasant view. It's a very happy car. Uh, there's nothing really negative about it. You look at this car and you just want to smile. You'll see this is the dead giveaway that makes it an electric car. We have a J1772 level two charging port here. This car can be charged off of a regular wall outlet in your home. It'll full charge overnight. Or of course you can install a 240 volt outlet or use any public charging station. However, the downside with this port, again, nitpicking, it's only 3.3 kilowatt. Really wish this had a seven kilowatt charger or somewhere around there. So it's only 16 amps. Again, driving around town throughout the day, you come home, plug it in, Eh, it's not enough juice, I don't think. Anyway, uh, it should be fine for most of your daily driving. We should talk about range while we're at it, may as well. I think the range is 59 miles EPA. Uh, however, the indication in the car has shown way more than that. I've been driving this car around, you know how I drive full throttle, ripping it around the city, having fun, and we reached the 59 mile projected range when the battery was down to 60%. So you might be able to go 80, 90 miles on this car on one charge driving normally, even a little aggressively. And uh, I'll take you for a drive in in a little bit as well. So come around the side with me. This particular one is finished in two-tone. It's a white car. And I believe this is a vinyl wrap in red. Uh, there's a few of them like this. We're here at Candy headquarters here in Dallas. And yes, there's a few of them in this color scheme. Inside though, I'll take you around in a bit. We won't go too in depth here, but just to show you, I know you want to see there's a bench seat up front. It is a four passenger vehicle, little armrest, and uh, we'll, we'll go through the interior, but it's honestly not too bad. Take a look at the back seat as well. I haven't sat back here. Let's see if I actually fit. <laughs> I actually do. And there's so much headroom, way more headroom than a Model 3, which again, there's no reason to make a comparison between this and a Tesla, but I fit pretty well. Is it comfortable? No, but you could absolutely go for a hour long trip in that car back there, no problem. 
Now let me show you around the back of the car as well. You can see here, this is the candy badge. If you see this on a car, you'll know that it's a candy. And then of course you have your tail lights, your K27, all the badging. This car actually has a backup camera and parking sensors that do work. I test, did test them out. There are so many cars like a new BMW 5 Series where you have to option parking sensors. It comes as standard on the candy. I mean, that's, that's crazy. So underneath the trunk, this is where you start to see that this is kind of an inexpensive car. This material is not painted. It is also not dark plastic. It's kind of just this molded thing. It's really not bad. I guess a few cars have that, but that's where you start to see that this is not a very expensive car. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. The seats fold down almost flat. I'll show you here. There's a very little hump that goes up. And uh, so you definitely uh, will have them have to lift up your items to go down. But with the seats fully up, you can see we're able to actually fit this is our very professional cardboard box that all of our camera gear is in. We're able to fit this back here, no problem. It's about the same depth as my electric smart car, but we have two extra seats in the trunk here. So that is pretty impressive for sure. Let's take a look at these wheels and tires. They're so tiny. They're 14 inch wheels. We have drum brakes in the rear, discs in the front, no problem there. And they're the Double Star Maximum Ohos. I love that name, the Maximum Ohos. And uh, it's a trusted brand, don't you think? But again, it doesn't really matter. This car is never gonna be under that much stress or load. It's okay to have not the best tire on there. So initial impressions, first glance on the walk around is it's a happy car. It's a very pleasant car. It gives off good vibes. It's not a premium car, but it's also not a car people are going to see you driving around in and go, oh, he's just, you know, totally hit rock bottom. He's driving one of those. It's actually like, it's kind of cool. You're driving an interesting car. It's a conversation starter. We had this plugged in downtown in Dallas and people were coming by asking what it is, taking a look at the car, checking it out. And everyone was smiling. Everyone was happy. And that's exactly what this car is. It's cheap and cheerful, and I love stuff like that. Let me show you around the interior, and then we're gonna, of course, take it for a little drive. Now let's take a look at the interior of the Candy. One giveaway to a car is if it's really cheap is the door opening and closing. I always harp on it, but it is a really important touch point. So let's slam the door and open the door. And you know what? It's no G-Wagon, but it feels pretty good. So coming inside, shutting the door. You know, there's no squeaks or rattles. That's one thing I noticed driving around as well. We'll talk about in the driving review. I'm going to go through all of the buttons and controls you have on this side of the door. Your unlock and lock switch is this switch right here on the door handle. That will control all of the doors. You have your normal open and close door handle. Makes sense. Front windows, rear windows, all power. And then you also have a child lock for your rear windows, which is really nice. The whole interior is finished in this piano black trim, which I'm not a fan of piano black. I think it's shiny. It shows fingerprints, but it does feel a little bit premium. So I get why they went for it. Accented with this beautiful red dashboard. I really like that dashboard uh, color. It pops. It looks nice. And then just pushing around as well. Everything feels really nicely screwed together. The button uh, feedback is really nice for like the hazard lights and the air conditioning controls. Everything's pretty tactile. Something I wouldn't expect from a car coming out of China. Like in my head, I, I thought this was just going to fall apart when I started touching things. And that's absolutely not the case. I need to tell you a little bit about the air conditioning controls before we go in. You have a few different settings. You have three fan speeds and off. And then you only have three temperature settings, which I love, but it's actually worked. So with none of these selected, which is when the car starts up, the car is just bringing in ambient air. When you hit heat, it actually only runs the heater. So it gets warm in here, which is nice, a resistive heater. And then when you click AC, it turns on the air conditioner and blows cold. And then you have your air uh, vent settings, but you have no like, let's set the cabin temperature to 72 degrees. Let's set it to 68, nothing like that. You can actually still adjust. You have air vents all over the place, windshield, face and feet. You have a uh, no rear defroster, it looks like, but that's fine. And a USB port in and a headphone jack. So what more could you want? I'm going to power up the candy now as well. That's what this little button again, it's totally wireless uh, key. This is the key for the vehicle. It's very nice. And uh, it actually is like a really nice key. I wasn't expecting that either. So first thing we need to talk about is like, what's it like to actually sit in here? Well, I'm six foot one, so I have tons of headroom this much, probably seven, eight inches 
I mean, this roof goes up. So if you're a football player, you'll fit in this thing, no problem. I'm not sure how many football players will be considering these, but I really hope they do because it's kind of fun and quirky. Uh, tons of leg room, although, and the seat goes back pretty far. The one thing I will say is the angle from my foot to the pedals and the steering wheel is a little off. It's a little bit like driving a van. The steering wheel comes up this way. There's no adjustment to the wheel that I can find. I actually don't think there's adjustment at all, no. Uh, so the wheel is fixed and the pedals are fixed, but that's okay. You have windshield wipers that work just fine. You have headlights that work fine. They're projector headlights actually, which is pretty amazing. You have cubby holes all over the place as well. You have one, two, three cubby holes, the door pockets. And, and the gauges are so funny as well, because on the left side, you get your motor RPM and it is actually tied to your front motor RPM. On the right side, you get your speedometer. The top speed of this car, we'll talk about it when we're driving, is about 68, 69 miles per hour. But I'll explain why that's not necessarily a bad thing. There's also a glove box down here with a user manual. Is it in English? Yes, it is. And it, it shows like it's not totally a translate. It actually makes sense. Although I just flipped to this page. It says, insert the charging gun. <laughs> I've never referred to a charging plug as a charging gun, but I will now forever. Uh, that was just, that just happened totally randomly. Insert the charging gun into the socket of the vehicle. I absolutely love it. Um, I would love to read through this and go through all the funny sayings in there. But seriously, I, as much as I find this car funny and amusing because I love weird cars, it's actually a functionally perfect vehicle for driving around the city. The cup holders are really nice. Well, cup holder, I should say. I had my Starbucks in there all day. You know me. It worked out great. The materials are nice. The steering wheel is a better steering wheel than that out of a Tesla Model 3. Uh, it's a beautiful wheel. You have touch controls right here. You can answer and end calls. You can change your mode, volume, track back and front. No cruise control, although I expect that would go over here. Again, this is a really base car. No options. So, um, that's about it for the good. And then there's only one real gripe for me about this whole interior. And it's a pretty big one, but it doesn't bother me so much. But it's this screen right here. And it's not the functionality of the screen. The screen is pretty cool. You can scroll through your menus. You can go into vehicle information. It can tell you everything from battery voltage, state of charge, motor temperatures, motor speed, RPM. I really like what it can show you. No navigation built in, but that's okay. You have your radio, you have your Bluetooth. It is not about the functionality. The settings are fine. Everything's cool in there. It's a nice looking display physically, but you just can't see it. Anytime it's sunny outside, this entire thing, even on the brightest setting, is just so glary. So it's probably easily solved with a screen protector, but driving around today, I pretty much didn't even use it. I just drove the car normally and you know had directions on my phone like I would have anyway and had Bluetooth audio set. So how often are you gonna need it? Probably not very but it would have been nice to be able to see it at least. So that's definitely the most glary screen I've had. The instrument cluster, totally fine, no issues. And I would say probably the only other gripe that I have in here, again, this is my first impressions. We'll have one of these for a long-term review. I just have it today, is there's no volume knob. So you have to push these volume up and down buttons on the wheel and it takes forever to you know, get the volume up or down. And that's that, sound system's pretty basic. I think it's only two speakers, might be four, but nothing to write home about. Let's try out the back seat. Now I already showed you that I can fit in the back seat just fine and that's absolutely true I can and it actually would be even better now that I raise the headrest up. Let me see if I can recline this seat a little bit as well and yes I can. So now it's actually much more comfortable than I originally uh, found. There's a little coat hook here uh, on the back of the passenger seat. I think that's interesting. I've not seen that in many cars and there's also coat hooks up here and, and the handles of course that you need when I'm driving but um, I would say the biggest drawback back here is not necessarily the size or the space it's just the lack of rear air vents a lot of cars even ma many more expensive vehicles don't have rear air vents so you have to blast the front ones would have been nice to have but other than that not much to complain about it's a four-seater so two people can easily comfortably sit back here and you even have back seat pockets you have door cards you have uh, handles automatic uh, you know automatic windows and um, yeah I mean it's a back seat and it's comfortable nothing to complain about love it that door's a little squeaky though so we've taken a tour on the exterior and interior and it's pretty impressive that a car 
can feel this nice. Now, of course, it's no S-Class, it's no Model S, that's not its intention. But when you compare it to vehicles such as like a Chevy Spark or other vehicles in its price category, it's on par with quality and in some cases, better. Uh, personally, like I mentioned, I came into this expecting something that's gonna fall apart, a product made of paper mache, and this gives you a really solid sense of solidity is what I'm trying to say. It feels like an actual product. It's not just gonna fall apart. You hit the door and it closes. Like that's just impressive to me. But what it really counts is how it's going to drive. So again, I've been driving this car around today and I wanna show you some interesting things that happen out on the road with it. Because uh, it's kind of wild actually. So let's go and let me show you how this thing is to drive around the town and maybe we'll even take it up to some higher speeds as well. And now we're gonna go for our drive in the Candy K27. Things are in not English and then it says Candy in English. We're gonna run AC, so I have to turn it on to one fan, click AC. If you hear a little wind noise from that, I really apologize, but it's actually warm out here in Dallas in the middle of November. So let's pull up my little screen here, vehicle information. It'll tell us our, our current. I showed you everything it can tell us. We're gonna put it into drive to start. And again, I start the car in neutral. There's no park. So I'm in drive. I can release the parking brake and we're gonna go for a drive. We have 45% state of charge, 45 miles projected remaining, which means this car thinks even after me flooring it everywhere, ripping it around the city of Dallas today, that this has a 100 mile range. Now I've charged it a few times throughout the day as well. Whenever we stop for lunch, I plugged it in just like you normally would. So I've been driving this car around almost all day around the city. It's what now, 3.25 p.m., 3.26, and it's been no problem. So let's get going. Now one thing people don't realize about Candy is it's actually Geely backed. So the same company that owns Lincoln Co., that owns Volvo, Polestar, Lotus, they're behind this vehicle here as well. And the crazy thing is, you know, I keep talking about the price for it. Less than $18,000, you get an 18 kilowatt hour battery pack. You get a really nice interior here. And when you factor in the tax credit, which many people will be able to take advantage of, uh, it, it, it's such a bargain, it really is. So the biggest question for me before we evaluate this um, as a vehicle is does it drive like a car or does it drive like a golf cart and Instantly off the bat when you're in drive it almost drives a little bit like a golf cart see I'm floored now Nothing really happens 10 miles an hour 15 20 and it's a little bit eh, like It's slow. It's faster than an easy go. Look we're already at 35. I'm still floored but there is a solution to this glaring problem and that is dropping the shifter down into S in this sport mode, baby. So now I'm just gonna floor it. No, I'm joking. It's not like melt your face fast, but now it's actually quick. It's probably as fast as my electric smart car. Maybe it's just a tick below. It's 43 kilowatt output. It's about 60 horsepower, but what that doesn't account for so much is the torque. The torque is, is really powerful. So under 50 miles an hour, under 60 miles an hour, this thing really gets up and goes pretty well. If you want to see my first impressions with time in our videographer linked over on the out of spec reviews channel is literally the first time we drove the car. We were you know, talking about this and trying it all out and you can see our first impressions right there. And um, you know, the fact that this car is, is so nimble to just turn around, let me show you the turning radius really quick. You just turn the wheel all the way and whoop, just like instantly makes a turn right on a dime. Pretty amazing. The turn signals have nice weighting to them. The steering wheel is really nice assistance. It feels good. Not much feedback coming back. This isn't a performance car. This is a city car, um, but it's actually really fun to drive around the city. Now, uh, there's another positive here as well, which is the suspension. Now, this car has soaked up some huge bumps. I've like hit these trail, uh, ra railroad tracks at big speed and like launched it and it just soaks it up like you feel nothing. Where even in uh, a Tesla or my smart car or a normal vehicle of this size, Chevy Spark for example, I believe is the cheapest car for sale in the US right now. Um, those cars have a much more utilitarian suspension feeling, something that's a little tinny. And I think largely due to the battery pack being so heavy in the candy, it gives it a much more premium ride quality than the price would suggest. 
Now, um, there is another downside, of course, you know, something that comes with cost um, is uh, noise. There's no sound deadening in this car. So road surfaces like this concrete here really translate through. You can already hear at 40 miles an hour, quite a bit of, of noise transferring through into the cabin. And on the highway at 65, 70 miles per hour, it's just about the same. So, you know, can you drive this car in traffic? Can you drive it on the highway? Well, that's what I came here to find out. Uh, it's a car that, you know, at least you would think you would not be able to. Uh, but I took it around the city of Dallas today, drove it in, in tight traffic, uh, and found I was pretty pleased. Now, a lot of you will want to know is what is the regen and acceleration and pedal tuning like? And that's something we really focus on here at Inside EVs is what are the driving characteristics of the EV like? And they're not that great when we you know talk about yes it's a good it's a car it drives like a car but then we start evaluating it against other vehicles that's where some of these weird things come in and again this is very much nitpicking about the car and specifically the the transfer between acceleration and regen there's only one regen setting on this car it's a pretty light setting uh, you still have to use your physical brakes quite often, but it will extend your brake service life significantly. Uh, it's definitely holding you back a little bit with regen. But when you come off the accelerator pedal, there's no real coasting. It's sort of like no power and then it's just regen on or off. There's no like modulation of the regen. So you end up getting just a little hint of this wig wag feeling, just this, uh, you know, rocking oscillation motion in your pedal. And that will come uh, with time to get used to driving this particular setup, but it's not as refined as some of the pedal mapping from other electric vehicles that we're used to driving on this channel. But again, comparing it to an easy go golf cart, it is so much more <laughs> refined than that by 10 times. So I'm just gonna throw it into this corner pretty hard here, wide open. We just burnt the inside of the tire. <laughs> it lays rubber, it's all that torque, it goes down. And it's not slow, you can zig through traffic. These roads here in Dallas are terrible, really bad. And it's been soaking up the bumps nicely. There's no any sense of feedback from the front suspension that turns the wheel in any sort of way. You can hit as big a bump as you want. The car tracks straight, it never feels uh, concerning in terms of body motion. I drove on the highway at 65, 70 miles an hour, max speed all the way into Dallas and out here to the suburbs, uh, right next to big trucks and never once felt concerned. Uh, the braking performance is also quite impressive. This car does have anti-lock brakes. You just slam on the brake pedal and it does a very good job of hauling you down to a low stop. So let's test some of that braking power out now. No one's behind us, full brakes right on a dive. I mean, pretty impressive. And now we're back to wide open acceleration in sport mode. And yeah, just accelerates nicely. It's not fast. It's not, you know, melt your face. It's plenty fine to zig in and out of traffic. And that's what this car is really best used for is tight traffic situations. And in fear of repeating myself, I think we can safely say for myself, I am blown away by the driving impressions. I've never driven a Chinese car before. I kind of had a like idea in my head as to what I would expect. And I, I figured, you know, we'd hit some bumps and the steering would torque steer and the whole car would feel flexy and it would rattle. And there is not a single rattle in this car. Everything feels so screwed together. And I mean this genuinely. I mean, it's screwed together when compared to very expensive uh, other vehicles on, on the market. I'm not saying it's screwed together nicely compared to other cheap cars. Uh, and I really mean this. And I know I'm putting a lot on the line by really praising this oddball Chinese electric car. It's not for everyone. Uh, and let me be clear, you know, if you're, if, this, if you're looking for an only car, this probably isn't it. This is a really good accessory to your long range electric car or accessory to your car. You just want to drive around electric or dip your toe into EVs. I have a feeling we'll see a lot of Taycan owners, like I was saying, buy these and uh, have them as accessories more or less. But for me, if I'm going to be doing the daily chores around town, this is kind of fun. It's easy to get in and out of. You just put it on, throw it in gear, floor it out of the driveway, and who cares if you crash it into something once in a while? It's inexpensive. I, I love that. I think it's cool. I really want to get one of these, put a lift kit on it, put some knobby tires, and take it up to the mountains in Colorado and go skiing. I think that'd be so fun to get a roof rack and safari build one of these. Oh man, my brain's already going. 
But uh, the real takeaway here is it's amazing that a car this inexpensive, uh, you know, the price point that it comes in at, it, it's really going to electrify the masses. Uh, I, I think the biggest thing they're going to be up against here is, are they going to be able to uh, produce them? I think the answer is yes, they're sold in many markets. Are they going to be able to get them homologated and approved for the U.S. roads? They claim yes. Uh, I'd say it feels solid, but I don't know. I'm not the one crash testing them. I don't think they've gone through crash testing in the U.S. yet. I'd say it, it's definitely more promising after driving it as to how solid it is that it might actually pass. Uh, that would be a shock, but it would be amazing. And, and they seem to be very confident that they will pass all homologation. And then, uh, you know, when will they start production? And or the production's in, but when will they start deliveries? And they claim spring 2021. And again, this is the base car. This is the K27. They also have the K23, which I mentioned there was two cars at the beginning of this video. The K23 is more expensive, more range, faster top speed, a little bit more refined, but I would say doesn't look as cheerful as this car. That car looks a little bit more uh, foreign to the US. It's something like we have not seen on the roads before. This is a little bit familiar. It's kind of like someone described a Mini over the telephone and then came up with this. Um, but I like it, and I love the, the spaciousness. So, yeah, my, my personal impressions are I, I, I'm just blown away that you can make a car <laughs> that drives this nice. Look, I'm driving with normal cars in America in something that's this foreign and quirky, and it has this little hello badge here on the air conditioning controls. Like, it, it's just weird, and I love it. So, yeah, I kind of want one, and I appreciate you guys watching this video. I hope you want one, too, because I, I, I really want to see these out on the road. Um, it's just so cool. So, let's head back, and uh, I think we're going to film some more videos. So, keep an eye on Inside EVs for more. Keep an eye on Out of Spec Reviews for more, because I think we're going to drag race the Model 3 Performance against this vehicle. And, uh, obviously, it's not going to win in a straight line, but will it win in reverse? Only one way to find out. We'll see ya.